Henshin go go baby, what's good guys, Yoku here, and I finally figured out how I want to bring about this topic to all of you. Basically, the gist, or rather, the theory in my head, and I've been saying this for a long time, something is the key to destruction units. Now, at first, I thought Yukong might be the actual key, and, and she still technically is a key, but I don't think she's the key, and, and maybe the key is a bit weird for me to say, right? Maybe the key is multiple units or multiple components that create the key. But as of right now, based off of everything that I've seen, Lynx is actually the answer, quote unquote. I feel like I'm playing Persona 3, but um, Lynx is the answer here to what I've been trying to figure out. As far as destruction units go, we understand one basic principle about these type of characters, at least this path. They need to sacrifice something in order to do a lot of damage. Right now, what we have essentially is two, maybe three characters that apply to this rule. Arlen, Clara, and Blade. I'm sure there'll be other characters that apply to this rule as well, but the reason that I mentioned these three in particular is because they all have some type of HP consumption thing that requires them to suck up their own HP or consume it, get hit, whatever the case may be. The gist of it is to get hit. Whatever destruction unit needs to get hit in order to activate something, that's what you're looking for. And Lynx does that perfectly thanks to this. Lynx's skill, Salted Camping Cans, is going to give you survival response. And normally, this is really nice to be able to heal. Now, you can see that the HP for is a little low, right? Being able to heal is a little low, so you kind of want to balance this out with some outgoing healing boost, giving Lynx more HP on her relics. All that's fine. The key thing to look at here is the, de the destruction and preservation units, particularly or specifically, I should say, are going to have an increased aggro chance. And it says greatly increased aggro chance. What this basically means is that you give this to Blade, you give this to Clara, you give this to even Japar, and it increases their rate of being hit. So again, on paper, all you're doing is increasing the chance to hit X character. In this case, let's use Blade. Blade is one of my favorite characters. Blade needs to get hit in order to uh, trigger his talent, which stacks up to five times. Anytime he consumes HP or loses HP, Boom, it's gonna charge this thing, five stacks, well bam, he's gonna make a big giant AOE slash across the board, hits everybody. This is where a lot of his clearing potential comes from. Being able to max this out and do so much damage as a follow-up attack is crazy. And in the event, or in, uh, I've seen it in the, what do you call that thing? Simulated universe, where we have the, the certain buffs from universe that buff specifically follow-up attacks. They increase the follow-up attack crit damage or attack percent from the follow-up attacks, whatever the case may be. Imagine that being applied to a character, and now we can apply that to Blade. Something like that would be phenomenal for a lot of characters in this game. And again, two destruction characters that I'm thinking of in particular, Blade and Clara. So you come over here and let's say that you have Blade's Light Comb, the unbreachable side. This needs to get hit or consume his own HP to trigger this. Doing this right before having your, your uh, talent pop off and then being able to do something else, you go again, you stack up your own attacks, you just skill use your attack, whatever the case may be, it works. Lynx as a character opens doors for so many other things to happen. And I don't think enough people are understanding or rather looking at this concept as, as a future, if you will. I, I know I might be rambling right now, but it's like midnight. I, I, I'm trying to get it across to you guys that this character as a whole opens doors for a lot of things. So real quick, I want to take you guys on a little bit of a journey that I kind of wanted to test out. And it's basically the idea of a Clara fused with a Kafka comp and the premise of it is to use Claire as an enabler in order to initiate bleed across the entire board. Very similar to what I was looking for with Fu Xuan, where I'm like, okay, if I can get Fu Xuan to do AOE quantum break effects or an AOE entanglements, that would mean that I could uh, essentially not trigger entanglement across the board because that's not how the, it works for DOT, but more so I could be able to use Kafka hitting multiple enemies across the board, using her ultimate to hit every enemy on the board and then stacking up five stacks of entanglement so that every single enemy goes boom every single time their turn happens like they take the max damage it's a little bit different in clara's case with clara or any character for that matter that is somehow able to use bleed or apply bleed across the entire field or to multiple enemies at once well now you have bleed now you have kafka kafka's triggering their bleed and then you're just doing a stupid amount of damage you add links into the mix and now links is forcing clara to take all of the aggro all of the damage clara naturally has her own damage uh, reduction as 
as well as aggro pulling onto the character. And with her being able to do that, now it's pretty much everyone hits Clara. When I played this particular team comp, it was very rare that Clara was not getting attacked. And with the increase in AOE from the enemies, it makes it even better because now it means that Clara is almost guaranteed to get hit. Savarok comes from the back. He's going to go pew, 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 Iron Man. And then now they're all dead because that's just kind of how Savarok works, right? The simple concept of doing this with just these couple of characters, I guess it's just these few characters, if you will, opens a door. And, and that's really what I'm getting at here is that Lynx opens doors for a couple different team comps. And that's my biggest thing that I've been looking for with Star Rail as of late. We are in this hyper carry meta where everyone is looking for characters to be a hyper carry. They're looking for characters to be a single DPS character, but we are finally getting more DPS characters. If you've been playing this game since day one or around day one, patch one, whatever the case may be, nine times out of 10, you have multiple DPS characters. And when you're building a team, as far as fun factor goes and efficiency, it shouldn't be one main DPS, three buffers, or one main DPS, two buffers, and then a uh, debuffer, or one main DPS, two buffers, and then a, a solo sustain. It shouldn't have to get to that point because at that point, we're, we just have too much monotony when it comes to team comps. It gets boring. I'm bored. I've been experimenting with a lot of stuff. And to be quite frank, a lot of these characters that are built into the game, their kit is not built for a main DPS role. We just force them to be main DPS characters because that's kind of what we're doing, I suppose. But in reality, a lot of characters are fit for sub DPS roles. So again, I think a character like Blade, who we, we've clearly seen do main DPS and sub DPS very well, SP efficient. We see Clara, main DPS and sub DPS very well, SP efficient. You play Lynx, who can heal them, who can keep the team alive. She has burst healing. She's got uh, the aggro, the force aggro on certain characters so that she can force them to take the damage. You could add a preservation unit if you need to, or you could spice it up. You could add another DPS character, i.e. Kafka or Zila if you wanted to do that. You could add a Nihility character for the debuffs, Paler or Silverwolf. You could add a buffer like Yukon. It's more about team construction and what comes from the ability to do this. Ultimately, what I feel about Lynx is that she is, I, I really want to say a phenomenal character. It, it's not that she is weak by any means. I don't want anyone to think that. I think Lynx is probably, and I, I know you guys don't like the term must pull, so I try to refrain from using must pull as often as possible. But I feel like if you have Claire, if you have Blade, if you plan on getting Jinglu, we know uh, she's being drip fed from the teasers or whatever, the trailers and things like that. These characters that you're highly interested in, these characters that are a part of the destruction path, anything like that. If you're like me and your favorite character path is destruction, I feel like you need a Lynx. That at that point, Lynx is a must pull for you. The character has too much in her kit to be able to work in your favor and not take away from things. She still has her basic attack which is going to do X amount of damage based on her own HP, which means you want to focus on building up her HP. She has some crazy good traces, being able to extend the continuous healing, being able to, uh, every time the person with survival response is hit, Lynx gains more energy, which is going to help you keep up her uptime. And again, you have someone like Clara. Now you get into the team order, if you will, where Clara gets to set up her AOE. Boom, she marks all the targets. Now anyone that gets hit, follow up attack. Pew, pew, pew. Savarog is shooting off laser beams. Lynx goes before the enemies, applies the aggro to Clara. Clara is at the very bottom of the list. All you see is laser beam, laser beam, laser beam. I mean, I, I promise you Savrock turns into Iron Man the way he is laser beaming every single enemy on the field. It does crazy amounts of, of toughness bar uh, damage and you're just breaking things left and right. You're hitting crits left and right. It's ridiculous how quickly the damage adds up by using Lynx plus Clara. And again, because Clara has her own ability to reduce the damage without needing Fushuen, now you have a much higher chance of survival for her to be able to take as many hits as she wants to with Lynx continuously healing her. Lastly, I mentioned Fushuen earlier and they're both on the same banner. What really makes Fushuen stand for a test of time is not only her kit, but one of the big things is that she is very free to play friendly, something that I originally did not think she was gonna be as free to play friendly as she is right now through her light cone. Being able to get her signature light cone, if you can't get that, you have moment of victory that you can use. You have day one of my new life that you can use. You have Landau's choice that you could use. And her relics, oh my goodness, bro. You have an assortment of relics that you can use on Fu Xuan. Now take everything that I just said and apply it to Lynx. Very similarly, if you have time waits for no one, which is going to be Bailu's signature light cone, 
that works phenomenal. In fact, I think that's our best in slot on links. You could use post op conversation just so you could have your energy uh, energy uptake and keep your ultimate consistently across the board, even perfect timing, which is something that, you know, we see as Loach's four star signature, but you don't really see it used a lot. It's looked at as one of his weaker options, but you put this on links, you get S5 or S3 or whatever the case may be. And this straight up gives you a broken kill. You don't even need sub stats. Look at what I have right now. You guys can see it on screen in S5 perfect timing. Not only does it give me 32% effect resistance, but it also increases my outgoing healing by an amount that's equal to 45% of whatever my effect resistance is. So this on top of an outgoing healing chest on top of if you can max this out 27%, you are easily doing as much healing as Bailu, potentially Locha, whoever it is that you need to in order to keep everyone alive. And and honestly, I think it's worth testing. I just don't feel like building up perfect timing. I'm not going to lie to you, but I do think it's worth testing to see whether or not a max fully invested perfect timing with high effect resistance for links is able to solo sustain an entire team through healing alone. Will she be able to output healing or, or wide mass team healing the same way that Bailu or Natasha might be able to do in clutch situations? Can it be consistent? These are all things that are worth thinking about, worth testing that I'm really excited to do. Even warmth shortens cold nights, which is the battle pass like home for abundance, something that we never talk about, but it is worth investigating or looking into to use for Lynx. Going into her relics, Lynx's relics are the same thing as Fu Schwinn. You want to rock the reduced damage, the weathering guard set or the weathering snow set, plus a, an outgoing healing. You you could do that. You want to rock outgoing healing plus the Longevous Disciple? You could do that. You want to rock the Wuthering Snow plus Messenger? You can do that. Messenger plus uh, Wandering Cloud? You could also do that. Her options are just as much as Fu Schwinn's. They're very flexible characters to build, and I love this for them. These are very good. Anyone that's free to play, any any player, doesn't matter if you're free to play or not, picking up these characters potentially, yeah, I'm not saying don't pick up Fu Shuen, but I understand she's a five star. It's very hard to hunt for a five star. If you can get a copy of Lynx, awesome. If you have Blade on your team, awesome. If you have, I don't have Clara, but if you had Clara, awesome. If you are an Arlen main, awesome. Now you can do something where you combine Lynx plus uh, a Japard and he constantly stays at low HP. The shield keeps him alive. Like there's some crazy combos that Lynx is going to allow players to do that otherwise don't have Lynx. We're finally getting into what I would consider a golden age for the early start of Honkai Star Rail, the beginning, the first year, year one of Honkai Star Rail, and we're entering a golden age, but I will save that for another video with that exact same title, because I actually think that's a really good topic that I really wanna dive into, but we've been here long enough. Guys, if you enjoyed this video, do leave a like, comment down below, and subscribe if you want to see more content like this. I'm trying to bring you guys a lot more of the, the random thoughts that happen to be in my head a lot of the time, because genuinely, I have a lot of things and I don't really wanna put them in a guide format, because it's ridiculous how much work I have to do just to get this opinion or this take or this thought, whatever it is, out to you. But if you want to see more of that, let me know down below in the comments. Join my Discord. We've been growing little by little. I've also been streaming on Twitch, twitch.tv slash I-Y-O-K-U-U. That's Yoku. And I might see you over there. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about links. If you have Clara plus links, hit your boy up. I want to see some Clara links damage. I want to see those big Clara links combos. Show me your Clara zero cycling anything with links giving her the forced aggro and Clara just iron manning everybody in the back of the field. I would love to see it. Without further ado, I can't say my user outro because it's inappropriate for YouTube. Smell you later.